Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are, good evening. Uh, we have a real treat for all of us today, a conversation with Marita Golden, and this is her new book. It's called The Wide Circumference of Love. And let's just take a moment and pause and look how gorgeous that cover is. And uh, I just think it's so beautiful. And this is a book, it's a novel, but its underpinnings are facts and it's true and uh, Marita is an incredible journalist and she has uncovered um, all of the facts pertaining to Alzheimer's in the African-American community that I think the vast majority of people don't know about and you wrapped it up in this beautiful novel mm -hmm. so you set out to write this and it took you four years because you uncovered so much information you didn't know about well this is my fifth novel, uh -huh. and uh, I had actually been working on another novel, a um, hundred pages deep into it, but like many writers, you find like this isn't the story I'm supposed to tell. Right. So I threw up my hands and just gave it over to the higher spirits, and then three weeks later, I got this assignment. And um, I don't have any family connection with Alzheimer's, but I said, well, I, I must be the vessel. So I spent I uh, four years researching. Uh, I spent a lot of time in a memory care unit, mm -hmm. uh, talking to families affected by Alzheimer's, talking to doctors, everybody, and um, came up with a story about an African American family in Washington, D.C., and it opens on the day that Diane Tate, a family court judge, is taking her architect husband to live in a memory care unit mm -hmm. because he has been diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's. But it's a story about love, mostly. Um, so I'd pause one second because I think one of the things that I always like to say that gets lost in all of the discussion about Alzheimer's mm -hmm. and memory and dementia and the cost of it all is the story of love. And I'm so glad that you based this book in love. Definitely. Um, there were so many instances of real devotion and transcendence that I witnessed when I was talking to families. And when I say love, I mean the kind of love that you write about when you write about your relationship with your father. That love that um, comes out of our, our ability to witness to people as they're going through something really, really hard. Yeah. And for people with Alzheimer's, they are in this place of, of complete openness and um, grace, mm -hmm. where they are right here now. Right. And the people that I interviewed who were most satisfied with caring for their, their loved one were in that place with them, where there was no judgment, there was acceptance of what was, and those walls that had previously existed mm -hmm. had all disappeared. And so I just heard some amazing stories of love and commitment. I'll never forget it. I was attending a conference uh, that was given by Us Against Alzheimer's and on the panel was a woman who'd been diagnosed and her son who was caring for her and he said the most amazing thing he said I talked to my other siblings about how important what I'm doing for our mother is and I say to them come get some of this. Isn't that amazing? Come That's... get some of this. And what he meant was this moment, as she is, yes, diminishing, but opening up to something powerful at the same time. So, Marita, so much, um, there's still so much education that needs to go mm -hmm. on in this movement. And I talk a lot about that this is a disease that discriminates against women. And when I say that Every 66 seconds, a new brain develops Alzheimer's. Two thirds of them belong to women, and no one knows why. People are like, <gasps> and the African American community is not, in your opinion, educated about the numbers of African Americans impacted by this disease. What do you want them to know? Well, nobody's educated about right. that. And when I was doing my research, and I came upon the statistic that African Americans are doubly are twice as likely to develop Alzheimer's as others. That just blew me away. I, I but kept... let's pause a second with that. Let's repeat that. Mm -hmm. African Americans are twice as likely mm -hmm. to develop Alzheimer's as others. So they don't know that, and then they probably don't know, like nobody knows, that women mm -hmm. 
are, you know, the most vulnerable. And that means if Afri that means African American women, right, are, who are the matriarchs, the, right? Well, yes, and the caregivers are really impacted by this disease. Mm -hmm. And so there's a whole conversation around Alzheimer's. So you have this silent epidemic happening right. that is not being talked about. Uh, what happened was my research led me to do an article for the Washington Post that mm -hmm. will be out uh, on June 4th about African Americans and Alzheimer's. And in addition to the statistic about being twice as likely to develop the disease, there's the other statistic that African Americans are only 3% of That's those. That's live TV. Someone's just walking by <laughs> by in the middle. That's OK. That's how our office is. So go ahead. 3%, African Americans are only 3% of those enrolled in clinical trials to find a cure. Latinos are 1.5% of right. those enrolled. And by 2050, African Americans could be 40% of everybody with Alzheimer's in America. Those are devastating statistics. Right. And they tell a story of a society and a community that hasn't really risen to the challenge quite yet. Do you think it's be, they haven't risen to the challenge because they don't know there's a challenge yes. or because they're too scared? Or All what? of that. They don't know it and there's enormous silence and shame about discussing the disease in the African American community. Um, I think in every community mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. there's a sense of hopelessness mm -hmm. around it. So mm -hmm. why discuss it? Exactly. Because nothing's going to happen. And exactly. we here at the at the Women's Alzheimer's Movement and in uh, you know the Maria Schreiber community are constantly trying to say there is hope. It's around the corner. We have to fund it. People have to participate in trials, mm -hmm. and there are things you can do in your daily life every day mm -hmm. that don't give you a guarantee, but that exactly. we hope can push it back or prevent it. It's like lose weight, mm -hmm. exercise, right. expand Move. your social Move. networks. Yes. Uh, one of the challenges African American women, for example, often have fairly complex, intricate and supportive spiritual lives. Mm -hmm. deeply, That's good. Deeply religious, have great networks of friends. Mm -hmm. But in terms of exercise and caring for the body, that's where there's a real challenge about around the diet and as you say moving right so there needs to be conversation about that right i just was saying that this week we're going to do a big conversation about women's brains and women's bodies and i say it's the conversation we should all be having because there is a connection and so uh, what are you hoping that this novel because let's come back to that it's not a you know it's not a like a report it's a right. novel right. it's a love story right. Uh, what do you want uh, to leave people with, with the well, wide circumference of love? Well, I want, you know, a lot of times when people are afraid of tackling a particular issue, you seduce them with a story. You seduce them with a love story or something else. And in the wide circumference of love, people will see the devastating impact of Alzheimer's. They will see the resilience of family. Mm -hmm. And I think they will get an education about the disease itself. Um, so that I think that the, the, it's, I've, it's been very gratifying that many people who've read the book have said, you know, this book is so full of so much love and, and full of so much hope. And I think that that's what I want them to take away from the experience of reading the book. So why did you do a novel and not a kind of um, just a book about Alzheimer's in the African American community? Well, because I think in a way you can reach more people with the novel. I mean, we're, I'm a storyteller. You can and we, trick people. Yeah, we all love stories, okay? Especially um, love Especially stories. love stories. And we can all, for example, this is the story of a son estranged from his father who has to find a way in the midst of this to circle back to him. It's a story of a daughter uh, who, like her father, is an architect and steps into his shoes to ensure his legacy. It's a story of a wife so that people can really relate to those kinds of universal struggles. And by the way, we're talking about Alzheimer's. Right, right. right. So I feel very lucky that I have the ability to write as a fiction writer and as a journalist because mm -hmm. the two genres will bring different audiences. What, what do you um, think is the biggest misconception that you found because you don't have a family member who had Alzheimer's and so when you started wading into this space as a reporter, as a novelist, as a woman, as an African-American, as a writer, what did you go like, wow, 
I'm, I'm right where I'm supposed to be here? Well, I think that one of the most important things I realized was that Alzheimer's doesn't suddenly start when you're 50. Mm -hmm. That the kind of life you live when you're 20 mm -hmm. has a definite impact on your predisposition, Oy. the likelihood. Oy. And I think that this is a book that a 20-year-old um, <laughs> college <in> <laughs> junior should read because they may have a grandmother or a grandfather affected by the disease. Mm -hmm. And when I was doing the research for the article, there were so many heroes like you who are mm -hmm. activists and doing research, like Dr. Goldie Bird mm -hmm. down at uh, North Carolina A&T. She's an African-American geneticist who's studying if there is a genetic link for mm -hmm. African Americans. It explains the, the twice as likely. Um, she has this great center uh, called the Center for Outreach on Aging and Alzheimer's and Health, and they do everything there. It's a center where if you have a loved one who has Alzheimer's that you're caring mm -hmm. for, go to that center and get trained on how to care for them. It, the, the faculty members who are doing groundbreaking research on Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. work out of that center. She hosts a caregivers conference every year out of that center, graduate students. So this yeah. is a very innovative place. And, and that's what we, that. we have discovered is that um, as the American population, as the world population ages, there will be a time in all of our lives when we need a caregiver and we don't have a workforce of caregivers who are educated about what is the difference between Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and MS and a child with special needs mm -hmm. and someone who had a stroke because they're mm -hmm. all very different yes. mind journeys, exactly, correct? Exactly, exactly. And people are going to have to age in place. There will not be enough assisted living. Age in place. They will have to age at home. Right. And so the support system that American citizens, citizens are going to need to do that, not prepared. Mm -hmm. We're not prepared at all for the coming tsunami right. of responsibility on younger people. Right. So, so much has to be done. So what is this title, The Wide Circumference <laughs> of Love? I, I, as I said, I just think this is so beautiful. And I thought about when I heard the title, I uh -huh. thought, what does that mean? What does it mean to you, The Wide Circumference of Love? Well, it's, it's like all great titles, they come to you like a line of poetry. And they have multiple meanings. But at the time that it comes to you, you're just grateful yeah. that you got this great title. And as I was writing the book, I wrote in my way into an understanding of what the title means. So you had the title before the book? Yeah, yeah. You did? Yes. And what it means <sighs> is that wrapped around this family is this circumference of love that they deep dive into, that they discover uh, that is completely new. And so I wrote my way into the meaning of the title, and I'm still <laughs> understanding the title. I just know it's a great title. I, I um, like you, every time I've gone to try to write a book or anything, I have the title before I have mm -hmm. the material, mm -hmm. and I also mm -hmm. write into the title, exactly. but that's quite unusual. Very much so. Yeah. I, I've had experiences <laughs> where my editor had to help me figure out a title, <laughs> but sometimes it's just perfect. Well, yeah. it's beautiful. This yeah. is the book, The Wide Circumference of Love, Marita Golden, who brought journalism to storytelling and wrapped this story of Alzheimer's in a love story, in a story of family, in a story of coming together, estrangement, working through all of our stuff. And yeah. there's stuff in every family, right? Definitely. And Alzheimer's has a way of making the stuff get on the table. And you got a deal. Oh yeah. yeah, I mean, I went through a whole, I mean, I would be sitting in these memory care units looking at people, wondering, will that be me one day? Mm -hmm. And so I went through a kind of a, not a crisis, but a lot of thinking about how I wanted to live, how I wanted to die, um, talking to my grown children about, well, you know, this there's this thing called Alzheimer's and you know, your dad and I have made our wills and everything, but still there's even more to talk about. So it was a, a very uh, important experience for me as a writer, but also as a person. And yeah. as I, and for me, writing is a deeply spiritual uh, endeavor. Yeah. And this took me deeper spiritually than much of what I've written. 
in the Sunday paper that we put out every week. Uh, and this past Sunday, uh, we hope you'll subscribe to it. Uh, but on Sunday, we talked about provocative subjects or subjects mm -hmm. that we're told we shouldn't put on the table. Mm -hmm. Sex, religion, mm -hmm. shame, you know, drugs, self-worth. Mm -hmm. But one of the ones that people don't put on the table is Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. How do you want to be cared for? Who's going to yeah. pay for that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do yeah. you want to be at home? Do you, yeah. you know, who's going to show yes. up? And, and yes. how that all unfolds. And it's one of the most important conversations we can put on the table because our children, uh, it's gonna land in their lap, oh, as yes. I say, caregivers yes. on deck. And the more we can talk about in an open way so that when something does come to our door, we're equipped and we have the language and it's not the first time we begin to talk about it. Yeah, I, I felt that when we sat down and talked with our children about this, you know, they were a little skittish. Why are you doing it? Oh, yeah. Do but, you have but, Alzheimer's? But, but, yeah, that's every time I go to the doctor, my daughter's like, do you have Alzheimer's? I'm like, and not yet, but I'll let you know if I do. But I, was, I realized, I said, I'm giving you a great gift now. Uh, we're talking about this now. We're planning for anything so that you will be equipped. And I really realized this is a real gift because in my research, I saw families that just crumbled under the weight. Yeah. Crumbled under the weight of um, the unexpected, the loved one that they were caring for had never said a word about this or the, uh, money. So or love wasn't love enough in, yeah. in some situations. Yeah. It's not enough, right? Yeah, exactly. So there has to be full disclosure Yeah. long before. So, and then I saw other families where grown siblings were working like clockwork. You know, what's the secret? What do you think is the secret the to secret, the families that work like the clockwork? The secret there was was something that existed before the the parent got the disease. In that there had been a bond that had been uh, created over the years, mm -hmm. so that when the parent got Alzheimer's, okay, well I can't care for mom, but I can write a check. I can't do this, but I can do that, and I'm going to do my part. Yeah. And then I found families where they floundered at first, but they rose to the occasion eventually. And I, and as someone who's never been through that experience, I'm not judgmental at all of families who may buckle, because this is an incredible yeah. responsibility. But I saw families buckle and then find their way through it, and I think that's the main thing that counts. And that's really the story of this beautiful book, The Wide Circumference of Love. You can get it. It comes out next week, but you but can, they can order it. it. <laughs> they can pre-order it now. I was getting to that. And also, um, you can find out more. Of it. She has a video uh, talking about uh, they this They can visit maritagolden.com. They can visit yeah. maritagolden.com. They can Google in Wide Circumference of Love. You can go to Amazon. You can buy it. But uh, equally important, you can sit down at your table and talk. Talk about uh, these subjects that are really kind of also on the cutting room floor when it comes to a large budget uh, oh, that the Congress oh. is uh, debating as we speak. As we speak, yeah. As we speak, uh, looking at uh, slashing funding mm -hmm. for diseases mm -hmm. like this. And so if you, this is a good place to make your voice heard. Um, so find out. Uh, What's at stake? Educate yourself, and if you want to read a great love story, you probably want to cry a little bit and all that sort of stuff, which I'm a sucker for. Buy Marita's beautiful book, The Wide Circumference of Love, and thank you. Thank and she you. has joined Move for Minds on June Definitely. 4th, in, uh, Definitely. where we're all going to get together and move to try to raise money for women's Alzheimer's research. So thank you all for joining us, and get the book. Thank you.